Now, all sorts of people buy property at auction these days. They attract buyers from all walks of life. And that's because there are bargains to be had by homes under the hammer. Well, there's a huge variety of buyers and a great selection of properties when you go to an auction. It really is, though, a race to get the best bargains. Now, you have to be in it to win it. Let's see what's featuring on today's programme. In Derby, there's an auction lot that's just a plot and a garage. It may not have a property. What it does have is potential. You could face problems in Kent trying to sniff out a bargain. No nose on that one. No nose on that one. Not an attractive look. And this Lancashire semi has a big kitchen, spacious lounge, and large bedrooms. However, what is going on at the end here? This is really strange. All of these properties went to auction. 500. Find out who bought them and what they paid when they went under the hammer. That's yours. Affordable property right on the water and commutable to London. Chatham in North Kent is a popular destination for would-be buyers looking to board the property boat. Just around the corner from the train station and I'm here to see this end of terrace property. Now the guide price, 75 to 80,000 pounds. Do you know it doesn't look bad from the outside? I'm gonna have a look around. Well, it's quite nice to see the original front door. It always makes that nice clunking noise. OK, bit of a nightmare in here. You've got glossy wood chip wallpaper everywhere, but a nice size sitting room, an original fireplace, beautiful sash windows. And look at these mouldings. Oh, no nose on that one. No nose on that one. Not an attractive look. Now, through into the second reception room, a really, really good size. I like to see this. You've got little storage space through there under the stairs, another fireplace. The kitchen through here. Now, you could think about taking this wall out and opening this up for a big kitchen diner. That would be quite a nice space. Something else that I'm really surprised about, there's central heating in this property. I didn't expect to see that. Do you know what? This house feels solid and well built. There's a bit of money to be spent. I quite like it. Structurally, this Victorian end of terrace property seems in good order. It's lovely to see the original sash windows and exposed brickwork outside, and all the decently sized garden needs is a tidy up. But it is in need of vast improvements throughout the inside, from the dated kitchen to the crumbling reception rooms. And now we need to venture upstairs. Upstairs, you've got two bedrooms, really good sizes. But what I love is this old original fireplace. There is so much detail here. Now, where's that bathroom? Typically, <laughs> it's off this room. You could just leave it where it is, or you could create a corridor along here and along this wall here. So you come in this way, keeping this bedroom separate with the window. It will make this bedroom so much smaller, but you could look at taking this chimney breast out, which I think would give you the extra square footage you need. This definitely requires a rethink, but creating a corridor to the bathroom will make this house much more attractive to both buyers and tenants. So what will a local estate agent make of this place that had a guide price of 75 to 80,000? The downside at the moment is that it's got a, the bathroom is off a bedroom. But the one thing I do really like is that whoever's had it before has left the fireplaces alone. So even in the bedrooms, it has got the original fireplaces. So we know the pros and cons of the property. What would be the best way of bringing it back to life? It really depends what the new owners are going to do with the property. But I do think they're going to have to get rid of the windows and put double glazing in, sadly. They need to treat the damp, upgrade the kitchen and the bathroom, and also get rid of this wood chip paper that really is very dated. How much regular income could the house achieve? 
If we were looking to rent the property out, then I would be looking at somewhere in the region of £575 per calendar month to £595 per calendar month. And the potential sale value? If the new owners decide they want to put it on the market for sale and they did a good job to the property, I think we'd be looking in the region of £105,000 to £110,000 for the property. There's a fair bit of work here and that upstairs bathroom really bothers me. Now the resale value in this area is not that strong. My advice to anybody wanting to take this on is spend as little as possible and perhaps let it out. Let's see who fancied it at the auction. Lot 22, it's an end of terrace house for improvement. All we need for it now is a buyer. Um, Stand me where you will, guide of 75 to 80. You're going to come in at 75, 75,000. Give me 70 then, doesn't matter where we start. 70,000 pounds if you like. 70,000 by the door, I'm on the way. At 70 I've got, and two now do I see. 72 I'm bid, 72 and four with you, sir. 74, 74 and six, 76, 76 and eight, 78 if you like. At £76,000 bid I've got, 78 sitting down, fill it up to 80, at £80,000, 79 if you wish, sir, 79, you're going to save your money for another lot bit later on, okay, well I've got £78,000 there, 79 I'm looking for, 79 in the blue, and 80, 81 I'm looking for, 81 bid, 82 now if you like, at 82 do I see, 82,000 I'm looking for, a will done at £81,000 then, sitting down on the right for the first time, for the second time, Third and final time at £81,000. You're also at 81 and that's A897. Thank you. Winning the auction with his bid of £81,000 was Steve, who purchased the property along with Ashley. The two used to be neighbours and have known each other almost 30 years. This is their first investment property purchase. When you've got friends and neighbours, all the world is a happier place. Guys, it's great to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. You tiptoed £1,000 over the top end of the guide price. We did, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just, yeah. So tell me, what was your upper limit, Steve? The upper limit, we were prepared to go to about 86. We're glad we didn't, but uh, we'd uh, sat down, we targeted six houses, uh, and we went for them in the sequence that they come up, and this was the second one. So we just went with it. So did you research thoroughly the yes. six houses you were yes. going to buy that yes. day? Yes. We downloaded all the legal packs. We went through and we sat down and worked out a uh, price we were prepared to pay for all of them. And we went from in that sequence. I love you too. Do you know how rare it is? <laughs> I meet a couple of guys like you that have done all their homework. Yeah, we went down to costing each house. Yeah. Actually, what it would cost to actually renovate each house um, to the point almost of you know, a thousand pound for this, a thousand pound for that, whatever. Um, we even looked at the house and said, right, it will need a new heating system, it will need new windows. So we costed everything as best we could um, to the point of almost down to the last sort of pound so that we knew that we could afford the maximum to buy the house. But the actual research part of it, we, we put every hour that we had oh, into the research. Weeks. We spent absolutely hours and weeks yeah. doing it. We've reviewed houses for auction, we've viewed houses through estate agents, um, through the newspapers, our wives were looking through newspapers, any house that was available that we thought was up for renovation, we'd look at it. We must have looked at 40, 50 properties. But guys, that's fantastic, yeah. that's brilliant, that's exactly what you should be doing. Yeah. So you know you've put your money in a good project here. Hopefully. We hope. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. We hope so. Top marks for this pair. Viewers, please take note. Steve and Ashley have really set a benchmark. The key to buying well at auction is research, research and more research. So let's talk about why you're doing this and how you guys know each other and whose idea was it to invest in property? I mean, is this a sideline? I was in the brick industry for 35 years. Uh, sadly, that came to an end and I need something else to do. Uh, and I've been doing this sort of work for other people for years, kitchens, bathrooms, small bits of walls. I think Ashley's the same. Yeah, very much. Um, it was a chance meeting at uh, my wife's birthday party yeah. last year. We sit there chatting, what are you going to do next? And uh, Ashley said to me, uh, I'm thinking of going into property development. And I said, that's something I've always wanted to do. So we said, well, we could have a chat about this. And it all sprung from there. Yeah, this is the business for Steve and I. I, I want to, I'm semi-retired, I want to retire. Steve's been made redundant, so we have to make a living some way. We both enjoy doing this. We think we'll both enjoy working together. Um, so why not? If we don't give it a try, we'll never know. Yeah. 
I couldn't agree more. In the case of these two, they're not jumping into the complete unknown. With their background in building, they have the knowledge and contacts to take this project on. What do you like about this property? Why was this property suitable for you? Well, one price. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I've always had this sort of like wording that I find houses there, some are honest houses and some aren't. Yeah. And we've looked at some really bad houses that people have had and done some really bad work to. This one's had no real interference from anybody. It is what it is and it's been like this since it was built almost. Um, so from our point of view, it's uh, just a house that we can actually bring into the 21st century. The wall to the kitchen and dining room's coming out, so it'll become a kitchen diner. And then we'll have a kitchen diner and a front room. And then obviously the false walls are going in upstairs to separate the second bedroom from the bathroom, which will make it much more private. We've got some remedial work to do on the outside wall, which we know about, and we've taken advice on that. So we think we know what we're doing. You're lucky. He knows all about his brickwork, we doesn't are, he? Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> very lucky. Yeah, and knows all the contacts to find them as well. I used to make them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So with experience under their belts and enthusiasm aplenty, I think these two could have a winning formula. But did all their pre-auction planning leave them any time to plan ahead? So tell me guys, what's your time scale? How quick do you think you can turn this place around? We're looking to be um, two to no more than three months. Three months tops. Two months would be good, one month would be even better. What is the ceiling price of this property? Have you done your research to find out what the top end of this is? Yeah, we've, we've done some research in this area. These houses normally fetch somewhere in the region of 105, 110,000 against similar properties. Um, with our buy price of 81, we've got a budget of around about 8,000. With the other costs, we think that's quite a viable. My only concern is that you've got to try and stick to that budget because this we is are, a yeah. money-making yeah. machine for yeah. you. It's all about getting the money and moving on to the next project. Moving one. on to the next project, yeah. yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck with this. Thank you very much. It's going to be you. quite exciting seeing what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Everybody needs good neighbours, but these two get on so well, they've decided to go into business together. There is a lot of work for the duo here, and I worry that Ashley's honest house may prove to throw up a few issues. In my experience, houses can be very dishonest, disguising a whole host of problems. How will they get on? Well, you can find out later on in the programme. <laughs> It's been a while now since we last saw those properties. Has any work been done or do they look exactly the same? Let's find out. Time to head back to Chatham in Kent. When you've got friends and neighbours, all the world is a happier place. Well, old neighbours stroke new property developers, Ashley on the right here and Steve purchased this Victorian end of terrace for 81,000, but they didn't jump into this refurbishment before doing their research. We've reviewed houses for auction, we viewed houses through estate agents, um, through the newspapers, our wives were looking through newspapers, any house that was available that we thought was up for renovation, we'd look at it. We must have looked at 40, 50 properties. But guys, that's fantastic, yeah. that's brilliant, that's exactly what you should be doing. Yeah. So they get a gold star for being armed with information. But will they get a gold star five months later when we return to see how they've got on with the work? With walls taken down, the wood chip chipped away and new fixtures and fittings throughout, the property is nearly finished. All it still needs is a top coat of paint and carpets to go down. The biggest property puzzle here was the bathroom, which could only be accessed via the second bedroom. Surely they didn't leave that as it was. Well, obviously, this is the main bedroom, which we've kept its original format, except for the fact that this used to be the cupboard, uh, which we've now created into a hallway so we can separate the bathroom from both bedrooms. But by losing the cupboard, we then took a piece of space above the stairs and made ourselves another cupboard there. And then obviously, we've got the false wall there. Uh, and this is the second bedroom, which is what we think is still a reasonable size. Uh, and again, you've got two doors there, one which comes off the stairs, 
and again the private uh, door to the bathroom with a skylight above the door which gives you light in the hallway so it's not too dark but we think it works really well something else which works much better than before is the newly open plan kitchen and living room Well, as you may remember from the first time you came here, there was a wall here dividing the uh, dining room and the kitchen which we took out. Here we had a chimney breast which we've had to take out to square up the, the kitchen and then we've laid laminated flooring and fitted a fully fitted kitchen. And it's a nice open space, it gives a proper uh, sort of sense of openness where you can actually be uh, what people like these days, to be able to cook and to be able to talk to their company if they've got any. This wall that was here before was just wasted space. You couldn't do nothing with it. It restricted how much cupboard space you had. So by taking that wall out, it just made the kitchen so much bigger. They also ditched the dirt that was piling up at the side of the house and put it to excellent use. We cleared, I think it was about four tonne of dirt, but we actually reused that dirt in our back garden and we leveled the garden off now and put a small wall around it. We've turfed the garden and we've put fencing all the way around the garden now so it gives that privacy as well. Steve and Ashley had planned to spend £8,000 on the renovations. Straight after we said that, we looked at it and then decided to fit within that budget, we'd have to do everything cheaply and we didn't want to do no, it cheaply. No. So we haven't gone too dear, but we've, we've bought some nice fixtures and fittings. So they ended up spending £9,500 on the work. Achieving the good finish they wanted took five months rather than the original two to three they'd hoped for. But this was the boys' first project together. It proved an excellent learning curve and not just about property developing. You think you know someone because you've known her 28 years, but you don't really, do you? <laughs> don't you? He, he absolutely <laughs> hates my singing. <laughs> I had to buy a radio because I couldn't stand the singing yeah. anymore. And, and I've, and I've realised wherever, wherever Ashley is, donuts are not too far away. <laughs> In need of an unsugar-coated opinion, we invited two estate agents to look round the property and share their thoughts. They've made an awful lot of changes, and they really are nice changes. I think they've probably done a slightly higher spec than I did expect for the area. But I think what they will do is get either good tenants or a nice a purchaser that will really appreciate it. I really like what they've achieved at this property. I like the way they've mixed the original features with the modern features as well. They have definitely achieved everything that they could to not outprice themselves, really. And speaking of prices, if Ashley and Steve were to rent the property out, what could they expect to earn from that? If they were to rent this, then they would get very good tenants because it's such a nice house. They would be looking at around about £600 per calendar month. If we were to put this on the rental market, we would look to achieve approximately £625 per calendar month. I was hoping for around 625 650 so that's about where we were thinking of anyway. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. Please with that. The lad's intention is to sell the property, though. They bought it at auction for 81000 and spent £9,500 renovating it, which gives them a total outlay of £90,500. How much could the sale value be? If I was to put this on the market, I'd be looking to market it somewhere in the region of £110,000 to £115,000. If we were to put this on the sales market, we would look to achieve £115,000. <coughs> So with their total spend of £90,500, Steve and Ashley could make a pre-tax profit of between £19,500 and £24,500, minus the usual selling expenses. We'd like to achieve that if we possibly could. That would, we'd be happy with that, wouldn't we? That gives us a sort of margin to carry on to the next yeah, one. Yeah, very happy with yeah. that. Yeah. Good. Anything they want to do before they move on to their next one? Holiday. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to uh, California in uh, four days' time. Um, Steve's um, getting his preparations done for his daughter's wedding and then uh, back to the auctions. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's it for now. Join us next time for more auction ups and downs. For more bungalows, basements and building sites. You've got it all on Homes Under the Hammer. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dirty Tricks of the Tradesman revealed next on BBC One with a dodgy driveway con. Well, later tonight, well, we know the cowboys would, but will the celebs? Would I lie to you tonight at 9.30?